What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Origami Angel, 24 hour drive through. Let's watch. I heard this band on the radio. That's how I found out about them. Some college radio DJ was playing this. It's a two piece. Sounds very close to uh, the main. This is very much probably exactly the melody of a main song, but we can talk more about that. Okay. See now, one difference between this group and the main is that these guys have songs where there's multiple different parts or like movements of the song, which you wouldn't hear in a main song. I don't, not really. Well, it's more complex. The drummer's pretty much responsible for all this. Alright, this guy's playing a jazz master. I think that's a I think that's a Mexican made jazz master in like a limited edition. Those come out all the time though, different things. It makes me think of those Fender like cosmic series or something. I'm not even the biggest, I'm not even the biggest person where like a lot of music critics or music fans, they want to put stuff into a box and categorize it into a genre. And if you look up this group on Wikipedia, they're from Washington DC, it's two guys. They track all the songs on guitar and drums, I'm guessing, and then um, overdub with bass and other stuff, etc. But um, Wikipedia has them classified as sixth wave easy core and then site site says like the original easy core is newfound glory and i guess easy core would be like a conflation is that the right word of um easy listening and hardcore so it's like adult contemporary version of hardcore but then there's also posi core and this is like whatever certain wave of emo you can get into a whole argument and debate about the originations of emo and everything, but... It's funny too because... I've listened to they have two full-length albums. I've listened to the first album... Maybe like ten times. And I've listened to the second album. I haven't gotten through it yet. I'll get into my thoughts though. So I guess the backstory of this group is that the guitarist, so it says on Wikipedia, was working 50 hour weeks and then writing music in between working. And this is like a theory, if you go into my blog, I have all sorts of long posts about music composition and different like philosophies surrounding it. But it is true that if you are working uh, very baseline example is like gardening. If you go out in the garden, it kind of puts your mind into a focused mode so that when you change change it up and go to songwriting, you like focus your mind to it's more uniform or it's, whereas where you have all the time in the world, it's harder to come up, come up with ideas. So I believe that story. And then him and the drummer I guess like there's some budgeting concerns, they go and record the album. Now if you watch them live, 
the drummer is wearing ear ear earbuds. I can't even talk. And it seems as though the drummer is playing the entire live show to a click track, which not unheard of. Huge major label big bands like Korn, Motley Crue, whatever. There was a whole it's a whole conversation about Motley Crue playing to the click and the backing tracks. But he's playing the whole set to a click track, which is pretty impressive considering he's wearing an i he's wearing iPod headphones. So how can you even hear the click over the crowd, all the equipment and everything? So pretty impressive. Um, now, some criticisms I could get into with this group. Hmm. Well, it seems like, like I've said, like I mentioned, I listened to the first album about 10 times in a row. First album's pretty much untouchable. I don't think there's anything really wrong with it. Now, the second album, they took off the first two syllables of their band name. Origami became Gami, Gami Gang. Album starts off, first third of it, 33%. It's really good. And then it kind of veers off a little bit, comes back. A lot of repetitive melodies. Like that song we just heard, you'll hear that same song in like different iterations over and over again. The album's 50 minutes long, so. Now, potential criticism. This guy writes songs in alternate tuning, using a capo. The traditionalist in me, I don't really like music that's played with uh, alternate tunings and a capo because it becomes a little bit easier to craft like certain types of melodies because you're just tuned to a chord so you just move your hand up but I will give this band credit the best stuff that they have is involves modulation so they'll have a song different parts in it whatever it is there's actually very unpredictable flow of parts and it is easy listening so I can see why it's easy chord Sort of like Fall of Troy-esque, but a little bit lighter. And um, the best songs that they have will have modulation, so the key will change. And it goes into like a whole different area, then come back. So I think there is room, like, and some of the lyrics are just kind of filler. So if they, and they have songs that achieve everything I'm talking about right now and are 10 out of 10, but... Um, I don't know if they're going to do a third album, but if they did, probably I'd want to, I would want to hear something on the shorter side, maybe, like 45, well, it could be an hour long, but um, the modulation, exploring the different um, styles, I guess, and approaches, I don't want every song to be like a main ripoff. I can keep talking, but uh, I was definitely pretty um, impressed with the quality of this group. The drummer himself plays stuff that is like, he's, it's almost like robotic, and uh, it's very, extremely tasteful as well. He doesn't overplay anything at all. It's almost like very light tapping on the drums as well. He doesn't like go too crazy, but it's interesting. His drumming is interesting because he kind of seems like checked out in a sense because he's like playing only what needs to be played, but at the same time, he's also like, playing all different complicated parts so he's clearly fully locked in or like invested so it's a weird it's a the drumming is very interesting to listening to to listen to and even like you can break down like one song i was just listening to on the second album where it starts off acoustic then it goes into a whole uh central part and then it, the ending is acoustic i think at one point during the song he actually ends it with a cymbal crash but he actually puts extra force into the crash. You can almost write a whole essay on like, wow, he actually decided to like put his own signature into the song. Like, whereas it seems the overall trend is that he kind of just plays it very flatline. But I just kind of summarized my thoughts on that. But yeah, pretty interesting. And the guitarist, well, we talked about the guitar playing a little bit. I definitely think the choice of guitar that he's uh, gone with is a, uh, thumbs up. Um, I've never really seen anyone playing those cosmic colored or whatever limited edition jazz master that is. And I, there's a certain type of guitar, it's called like the Mercury edition or Saturn edition or planetary edition. It's like a weird shape. I actually thought about 
um, the fact that I would play that guitar. It's cool, but he's got a jazz master, so it's a different um, body style. Now, I would be interested to know about what kind of um, amp he's recording through. Seems like the production on their albums is pretty good. Uh, drum sounds, yeah, it's it's about as good as you'd want it. It's not crazy like uh, super artistic production or anything, but it's definitely more than um, satisfactory. But he's got the distortion tone, maybe like a little bit of a less light distortion tone. And then you get into the fact that they're playing live to a click with the other instruments being backing tracks. So there's no bass player. Now, there's arguments on the internet about what exactly is going on. It seems like at one point in time, the guitarist was splitting his signal into a bass amp that was like, I guess, somehow playing bass notes. Um... It reminds me of this other group that's out there called Best Friend Band. It's like this guy and his son playing in live places. And Best Friend Band will play like Nirvana covers, but it's just guitar and drums. But when you watch the video, there's all bass as well. So there's speculation that he was just overdubbing the bass after the fact. But, I mean, I'm sure there's technology out there that will allow you to perform in this way. This, the thing that I get curious about is like... There has to be some sort of margin for error, right? Like, what if you, like, what if the drummer loses the click in the middle of the show? That's like a total uh, Ashley Simpson moment where it's like, oh, like, we just lost the entire song. But it seems as though this drummer is like a robot metronome who never misses, so it's hard to tell what's going on. And I don't know the technology, but perhaps there is technology out there that, like, will kind of adjust to where you're how you're riding the beat so to say but i think i've said a lot and um this group's pretty interesting shout out to the radio dj who was playing he must have been playing them because he started talking about them but he was playing something else with female vocals don't know what that group was but this guy was doing a whole easy core playlist and he was playing a group sounded just like this with female vocals if you know what that group is write in the comments because i have no idea I just happened to catch it. I've spent the past two years pretty much only using the CD deck in my car, and then recently I've been listening to the radio. So, always interesting to hear something on the radio. And, uh, this is a band where I have mixed emotions of like, wow, I wish I would have come up with the songs. So, there's a level of like, being impressed, jealousy, and also interest, because I want to see when they play live exactly how it's all configured and I can wrap up this video by talking about the fact that like yes these guys are very good however there were tons of emo bands going back to whatever the my first ever time you know getting involved in local music there's tons of emo bands and even uh, well I guess it would be about 12 years ago I played at a show with my former group the opening act was a band that sounded just like this almost maybe not quite as good but like pretty similar and they had no audience at all so i don't think these guys are breaking boundaries musically but they have the ability to do so like if they really get serious about it and i think the way that they should approach it is like you got to take the lyrics more seriously and um start looking at the compositions even more in depth and seriously but they they're doing pretty good i mean there's all sorts of time shifts and breakdowns and everything he's going into screaming on here vocal overdubs everything so it's pretty promising and um let's see if they do a third album exactly what it sounds like but i'm interested and if you enjoyed this video hit the like button comment subscribe and i will see you next time Oh, and also make sure to check out my blog is online. So if I end up going to see this group live, I will definitely write a full blog about the experience. And uh, I got other stuff on there about music. You can check out my website, mikedelbeckio.com, everything. All right, see you next time. Bye.